Earlier we told you that women are making a strong statement in this election. For one, there's a possibility that women may comprise the majority of our Supreme Court. Back in 1957, this possibility was unthinkable for city council, let alone the Supreme Court. But that didn't stop a slate of women in the Putnam County town of Buffalo to organize and try to kick all the men out of office. In many ways, Buffalo in 1957 was what you'd expect a small town to be like. Good, hard-working people, but not a lot of conveniences. Well, we had a ferry here at Buffalo. That's how you got across the river. I've been to Winfield and uh, come up there in the ferry, be over on this side, and you was trying to get over here to catch a bus back to Buffalo. And while you was on the ferry, the bus go by, then you had to hitchhike or ever how you could get to Buffalo. So it wasn't always easy. Up -de -doo, up -de -doo. I hear a polka and my troubles are through. You knew every kid that was in school and you knew their parents, you knew where their parents worked, and the biggest part of them, you tell what shift they was working, you know. And, of course, of an evening in the summer, there wasn't any air conditioning. People would walk up and down the street, and other people would be sitting on their porches. Councilman Ronnie Harris remembers when Vernon Pig's garage was a favorite hangout. That would be where everybody gather around the old Burnside stove and tell their stories and tell their different things, the tales that they had to tell, see which one could tell the biggest lie or something of that nature. It was just sort of a lively place. There might have been a, an occasional card game. There might have been an occasional uh, drink taken by some of the people coming in and out, you know, and a lot of jokes being told and a lot of laughter going on. And then, of course, people brought their cars in to have them worked on. And all the girls in town are crazy about me. Vernon Pig's popularity helped him get elected mayor of Buffalo in 1945. But by 1957, a group of five women had enough of Pig and the five men on town council. Suddenly, a town that was usually ignored was receiving a lot of attention. Mrs. Warner, since you're leading the slate of these female candidates, tell us uh, what brought about the uh, idea of having all these ladies band together and run for election here in Buffalo? Well, we hadn't had a, an election for in so many years, at least a satisfactory election, that we all got together and decided that we'd do something about it. What do you think of this uh, slate of women candidates that are going to run against you next Tuesday and they say they're going to unseat uh, you and the members of your council? It's all right. I'm glad to see some men is taking this part, town the first time it's been in here for 10 years. Well, they're charging that uh, we haven't had any elections for about 10 years, and they want to have a spirited one. What about that? It's going to be pretty much spirited, I think, and it's their fault we haven't had one. Well, how's that? We've held conventions and nobody turned out for it. I see. These women had concerns that most of us no longer worry about. Uh, number one, we'd like to bring gas to Buffalo. At present, we... Uh, uh, cook uh, by electric or coal and heat by coal or fuel oil and it's very expensive. And uh, you ladies think that you could get uh, natural gas down here? Yes, we think we can. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And you're Mrs. Who? Lorraine Hart. And I would like to see the telephone service extended. To me, she was the type of woman that if she got something on her mind she wanted to do, she was going to do it come hell or high water, as they say, <laughs> you know. Right now, we're, the only place we can call is the Winfield Exchange, and we'd like to bring the uh, county together by being able to call other places. Uh, that is, extend the ability of your local phone yeah. service out into the county. It would have been hard for them to actually get the phone company to say, okay, yeah, you can call other places in the county for nothing. And, you know, things like that would have been hard. Now, maybe being all women, they may have done it for them. I don't know. We have investigated this and talked to the telephone company and the gas company, too. And both of them said it would cost too much down here to get it. Mm -hmm. Well, he was a good man, but I'm not sure he was a leader. Bill Whittington used to stop by Vernon Pig's garage. If you look back, I don't know whether we had any improvements at all during his administration. And he also was a water man here, and I know definitely he was not qualified for that kind of work. The man that came here from the St. Albans Water Department said he didn't understand how we all kept from dying. Boom, 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 boom,
if it would happen even today, if, if a group of women was going to run for the council and the mayor and would be running against the present council and mayor and would be all ladies running, well, I'm sure there would be uh, quite a talk about it. What do your husbands think about you uh, ladies running for office? They're behind us 100%. Well, Mrs. Warner, these ladies seem determined. Do you think you'll be successful and win the election? We think so. They all had a good intention, but uh, back at that time, you know, uh, here in Buffalo, women didn't run no offices. Well, uh, do you think they'll win? I hope not. You hope not. Uh, what do you think? How, how does sentiment, do we have 368 people in Buffalo, how do you think the sentiment is running? Well, I hope to win by landslide. You think maybe you will? I hope so. And what are these other councilmen, I imagine, uh, share that same opinion? I think, I yes, think. sir. You do? Always have good hopes. Always have good hopes. I don't think there's any question. Well, I'll say this. We'll certainly have our eye on Buffalo, West Virginia, Tuesday, Election Day. Put your dreams away for another day. Vernon Pig defeated Norma Warner 90 to 36. The rest of the women also lost. Warner was the first and last woman to run for Buffalo mayor. In a June 5, 1957 Herald Dispatch story, Warner said, I'm glad it's over, and to know we won't have all that responsibility, but we'll be looking over their shoulders. And maybe their campaigns did accomplish some things. In 1958, Buffalo got its first fire engine. I remember when they got it, they drove up and down through town, and people was hanging around on it, and whenever there was a fire, people would be running out and jumping on it, you know, the older folks going to the fire. The women also wanted more opportunities for kids. Well, I'd like to see some recreation for our young people, and that's one of the things that I've worked for for a long time. Our young people in this town have no place to go uh, except down on the street corners, and that's certainly not an appropriate place for children these days. And you're Mrs. Who? I'm Rosalie Martin. Well, I heard the news. That's good to rock it tonight. David Hart says Mayor Pig ran with Rosalie Martin's idea two years later. Hart says the mayor asked him and others in their neighborhood for help. You know, it was like the day before election day, and he said, uh, now boys, said if uh, you all campaign for me and get me elected there, said, said I'm going to get you a swimming pool. Said, you'll have a swimming pool. Uh, well, all right. So we went over to my grandma's house and borrowed some uh, cardboard off of her and got some crayons and stuff, and we made a bunch of signs. Said, uh, vote for pig for mayor, get a swimming pool. And we took them out and hung them up on, on telephone poles all around, you know. And my grandmother even, you know, she helped us do it. But she told us, said, now whatever you do, said, don't let your mom know you done this. <laughs> so I don't know whether she ever found out I had done it or not. Current Buffalo mayor, Kenny Tucker, remembers the talk about a swimming pool. I know I was excited back then. Oh boy, we're going to get a swimming pool. <laughs> it never did happen. Bye, bye, love. Bye, what did happen was that Pig lost the mayor's race to a hare, Oliver Hare. A bunch of us got in cars and stuff and drove around blowing the horns and stuff. Of course, I wasn't driving, but you know, I was in with my mom and <laughs> a lot of other people. You know. Mrs. Hart had a lot to celebrate. Pig was replaced, and Lorraine Hart was elected town recorder. I got a we cross town. When that building blew down, Today, Leah Higginbotham is one of two women on council. We actually wanted to see some improvements made in the town, just, you know, on the premise that these other ladies ran. We thought with a, a woman's voice on the council that maybe, you know, we could get some different things done. Higginbotham is not alone in predicting a woman mayor in Buffalo. I'm surprised that a couple of women haven't run for mayor because there's some, there's some strong